afternoon class here we are here time 101 general chemistry one of course you know we have started this uh, class in a physical class but i decided that uh, i think it's better for us to also do this recording of the lecture for those of us who missed the class and those who also want to you know play the class again and again to be able to understand the class so we're starting with liquids solids and solutions of course like i said liquid solids and solutions you know that the course is divided into three there are three of us taking this class so i'm actually dwelling on the section of the course that is meant for me and for this particular module 1.1 we are going to be looking at states of matter distinctions of states of matter and we'll look at a brief survey of the properties of solutions under that, the properties we we'll look at will be surface tension and, of course, issues of vaporization and boiling. And then we'll conclude. It is always good to make these videos short so that it's not boring and you'll be able to grasp just those short, short topics. So we'll look at this in this particular module for this lecture. Now, state of matter. Matter can exist in three states, a gaseous, the liquid, and the solid state, of course, depending on temperature and pressure conditions. So we're saying that all matter can exist between these three states, depending on temperature and pressure conditions. For example, if you have something like water, let's use water, which everybody knows about. There's nobody that will say you have never used water either for drinking, taking your bath and stuff like that. So everybody knows about water. So if you take a glass of water, put it in a maybe Ragolis water, even the one we call pure water, the table water, put it in a freezer. After some time, it will solidify. And that automatically means that you have turned it from the liquid state to the solid state. Or if you take that same water, heat it, it gets to a point and that water will start boiling. When it starts boiling, you start seeing vapor. And that vapor is the water vapor, which is a gaseous state. So depending on temperature and pressure conditions, water can exist. And of course, all matter can exist as solid, liquid, or gaseous. At this point, we are not, you know, we are looking at the general case. Remember our elementary chemistry, we can also have things like sublimation, where matter can exist directly from the solid to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state and also some other special features. But we're looking at purely the solid liquid that is a general case of existence of matter. The molecules of, a, <clears throat> the molecules of most gases are so widely separated at ordinary temperature and pressure that they do not interact with each other significantly. So in the gaseous state, the molecules are free to move. In the liquid and solid, they become a little condensed, and that's why we call them condensed phases. And the particles are closely packed and interact strongly. If a sample of gas is cooled and compressed sufficiently, the molecules approach each other closely enough for intermolecular attractions to overcome kinetic energies. When we say that the molecules of gas are widely spaced, that means they have enough kinetic energy to move around. And in fact, that's why we will see in the distinctions of the states of matter, why it's easy for somebody to walk into the class, you know, wearing a very good perfume. And it will be easy for you to say, ah, this guy smells nice, you know, something like that. So that gives us, you know, an idea of what happens in the gaseous state. Like the water we said, 
when you start cooling the water in the freezer, then the molecules of the liquid are forced to come closer. It's just like somebody who is feeling cold. Naturally, when we are out there, we are feeling cold. You see the person who starts holding himself, you know, squeezing himself. So that temperature drop will now make the individual feel like every movement is about to stop. And of course, if that coldness continues to go down, then eventually, if the person gets to a temperature where the you know, body cells can no longer withstand, everything will freeze and the man will die. In the liquid states, the forces of attraction among particles are great enough that disordered clustering occurs. So you see, the liquid state is in between the extreme case of the gas and then the other extreme case of uh, the solid state. So we can see that most solids are characterized by other arrangements. Like if you bring out, you know, um, the water we talked about from the freezer, you know that there is a shape, a particular shape it takes. So solids have other arrangements. But then they are unable to move because they are on a particular place that can only vibrate, you know, mean vibration about their fixed position. Now, these three basic states of matter exist, but we also have a fourth state of matter, which we call the plasma. This plasma behaves like a gas too, and that's why we take three states as the basic states, but we can also say a fourth state, which is a plasma. There are also other states of matter, which we can say are sub-states of this plasma. There are so many of them, about 12 of them or more. But at this your stage, we will concentrate on the three, three states of matter, the solid, the liquid, and the gaseous state. And of course, we we'll mention the plasma as the fourth state of matter. Now, when we look at diffusibility, we can see, of course, like volume and shape, the solid has a fixed volume and shape. When it comes to the liquid, the fixed volume you know, is there, but no fixed shape. But when it comes to gas, no fixed volume, no fixed shape. Diffusibility. The gases diffuse easily because they are on the move. They easily diffuse. Now, the liquid does not. The diffusion reduces, although it can flow. So we can say that the diffusibility is reduced, but solid does not diffuse at all. The same thing, we'll go to the third one, compressibility. Now, because diffusibility is high, then it means that you can compress. So, gases can be compressed, liquids to a little extent, but solids you cannot compress. If you want to compress an ice block, then automatically you break the shape of that uh, ice block. The next is density. And of course, we define density as mass per unit volume. So, you see the density of the gas you know, liquid and solid also differs. Now, in the same way, number five, by way of volume and shape, is order. That is the order arrangement, which you have mentioned. For solids, they have order arrangement. For gases, there is no order arrangement at all. Now, a brief survey of properties of pollution. Now, you know, what we actually were interested in is solutions. And these solutions, as we'll see later, are actually what we call homogeneous mixtures. So the first one is surface tension. I will say that the surface of a liquid acts like an elastic skin covering the liquid. That is, the surface is under tension. And we can define surface tension as one, a measure of the inward force that must be overcome in order to expand the surface area of a liquid. We can also define it as the force in Newton acting parallel to the line on the liquid surface. And of course, we know that surface tension decreases with increasing temperature. We'll explain that shortly. Liquids of high boiling point have high surface tension and biodiversity. Now, looking at the diagram we have here, we are trying to show the intermolecular force of attraction between the molecules of a liquid. If you take a particular liquid at the center, and then take another liquid at the, you know, near the surface of that liquid. You find out that 
the molecules at the center will have equally distributed forces of attraction between neighboring molecules. But those molecules at the surface of the liquid will have attraction beside and below none at the bow because they are the only molecules at the surface. So that makes that surface act like an elastic skin. And these are the things you can observe. You know, these insects we call uh, water scatters of um, birds. You see them, they land on water quietly. We can also do an experiment. Just take a pool of a bucket of water or a basin of water. Allow the water to settle, no movement. Take a little needle, dry the needle, and drop the needle quietly on top of that water. You will see that the needle will float. The needle will only sink if you shake the water. So there will be rearrangement of these forces. Once you shake that water, there will be rearrangement of these forces. Just like if you also heat the water, the molecules will gain energy, as we shall see in vaporization shortly. The molecules will gain energy, and once they gain energy, they will start, their kinetic energy will increase, and these intermolecular forces of attraction will be destabilized, and then whatever is there will sink. The same way, if you go to a tap and fetch water, after fetching water, you close the tap. Sometimes you see at the tip of that tap, you see a bubble of water held together. That bubble can hang there for a very long time. It's as a result of surface tension too. So these are the things we can see and we know that the surface of the liquid is under tension. That is what we call surface tension forces. Now we go to vaporization and boiling. Now molecules of a liquid are in constant motion. Remember the distinctions of matter we said. When they acquire sufficient kinetic energy, that is when you're, you hit them, now they can break away from the unbalanced forces we just described, the surface tension. They can break away from the unbalanced forces of attraction and the surface of liquid and escape into the gaseous phase. That means we have heated them because of temperature increase. They now move from liquid phase to gaseous phase. Now in a closed system, in a closed system, we are using this figure below, which I will use and explain. Some of the molecules in the gaseous phase may return to the liquid phase and eventually setting up a dynamic equilibrium. Look at this equilibrium. Evaporation, you know, from the liquid you have evaporation and from the vapor you have condensation. So there is a dynamic equilibrium of evaporation and condensation. Now the molecules down where the heat is coming from will acquire more energy and their kinetic energy will increase and they will now become less dense so they now move up and the ones up that are at the cooler region will start coming down because of high density they are more dense they will now come down acquire energy again and move and then we'll see something like eddy currents a kind of movement in the water if you're boiling water if you look at it or around your boiling ring, you will see that movement. We call that eddy current. That bulk movement will continue. Some of the molecules will escape into the gaseous phase, heat up. You know, when they go up there, they start condensing again, coming down. And at the surface of that liquid, a particular, you know, pressure will be set up. And we call that vapor pressure. Now, this vapor pressure will continue and until it becomes saturated, and we we'll call it saturated vapor pressure. And this saturated vapor pressure is set up above the liquid, which means this saturated vapor pressure rises as the temperature increases. So as you keep heating the liquid, the SVP continues to rise. When the SVP is equal to the pressure attending above the liquid, that is external pressure, bubbles of vapor from within the liquid and the liquid is said to boil. You see, so we define the boiling point of a liquid as the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the external atmospheric pressure. Of course, if you add anything to that water at that point it is boiling, 
especially non-volatile solids, there will be a change as we will see further in terms of the colligative properties. But as the saturated vapor pressure is set up, it continues heating until if the atmospheric pressure is a 760 millimeter mercury, the saturated vapor pressure will continue to increase until it's equal to that 760 millimeter mercury and that liquid will start boiling. So you now find out that the intermolecular forces of attraction between liquids are not the same. And that's why the boiling points of liquids are not the same because it is intermolecular forces of attraction that will be broken for these liquid molecules to be able to escape the surface of the liquid to go into the gaseous phase, set up a dynamic equilibrium, and then set up saturated vapor pressure, which when it is equal to the atmospheric pressure, at that temperature, we say it is a boiling point of that liquid. So different liquids have different boiling points. And in fact, we use boiling points to identify uh, different liquids. So, We'll be able to discuss the different states of matter, the distinctions between these different states of matter. We have looked at surface tension in liquids, and we have also looked at vaporization and boiling in liquids. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the class. See you in the next module. Thank you.